chapter 16 the pharisees versus the present generation preachers it is only fair i suppose to examine a short comparison between the pharisees of the lord's time and the present generation of feel good and prosperity preachers the pharisees were bitterly rebuked by the lord because they were hypocrites because although they preached the truth handed down to them by Moses, as well as encouraged people to abide in said truth, but they themselves lived lives of deceit by not doing what they preached. In other words, as hypocrites, the Pharisees deceived themselves and not their listeners. As it is written, the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Therefore, Whatever they tell you to observe, that observe and do, but do not do according to their works, for they say and do not do. Matthew chapter 23 verses 2 to 3. The Pharisees did their works to be seen and admired by men, thereby deceiving themselves, since God saw their heart. But such hypocrisy so infuriated the Lord that he strongly admonished his disciples and servants thus. For I say to you, that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5 verse 20. The instant question then is, who is worse, the Pharisees or the present generation of feel-good, prosperity and covetous preachers? It is certainly evident that the latter is the worst enemy of the kingdom of God because of the level of violence it has perpetuated against God. A hypocrite is a victim of himself. He wallows up in self-deceit, being a danger to his own soul. The Pharisees preached an encouraged undiluted word as commanded by Moses. They never added to or subtracted from it neither did they handle it deceitfully or unfaithfully for covetous gain. A mere imagination of the prevailing abominable heresies being preached, practiced and encouraged by present agents of darkness is sufficient to send a shock to the spine of those who truly love God. Most who profess to be servants of Jesus Christ deny him outrightly by either preaching and practicing their own gospel and doctrine or presenting unwholesome and diluted word of Christ while perfecting their psychology 101 feel good, prosperity and demonic gospel and doctrine. See 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 3 to 10, 1 Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 to 2, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 to 5, Titus chapter 1 verse 16, and 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 16. They not only break the word of God, but they also would not stop until they teach others to do the same, thereby putting them in disobedience and bondage. As it is written, whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 5 verse 19. The Pharisees caused lesser damage to the kingdom of heaven than the present generation of preachers, in that they deceived themselves, thereby being innocent of anyone's blood on their heads. Unlike the present generation of manipulators, deceivers, and covetous feel-good and prosperity liars, who have not only opted for the destructive path, but are determined to take all who come to them to the same path through the breaking of the law and teaching and encouraging others to do the same. They preach and encourage worthless feel good and prosperity doctrine, which only leads to earthly gratification and death. As it is written in the first epistle of the apostle John, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, 
is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 18. Whoever does the will of God abides forever. God's ultimate desire or will is that no one should perish, but has eternal or everlasting life with him. And his will for his servants is to fulfill the purpose of their calling through implicit obedience and getting others to turn away from all evil deeds and return to his undiluted truth. See Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 23, Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 to 23, Matthew chapter 28 verses 19 to 20, and John chapter 3 verse 16. As the Apostle Paul strongly warned the Colossians, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. The Apostle Peter was on point in his characterization of feel-good and prosperity preachers. They are sports and blemishes, carousing in their own deceptions, while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetous practices and are accursed children. These are wells without water, clouds carried by a tempest, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. 2 Peter chapter 2 verses 13 to 14 and verses 17 to 19. It is not enough to preach the word of God, for it is required of one who preaches it to live it completely. Whoever preaches the word of God, which word is sharper than a two-edged sword, must be careful to present it completely and faithfully, as well as live by it or die by it. A teacher can certainly not teach what he does not know. And the only way to know the word of God is to eat, drink, breathe, and live it without any shadow of compromise. But the one who deliberately and unfaithfully presents the word partially, presenting only the sugar-coated, that is, the sweet, feel-good, prosperity blessings aspect of the word of God, commits abominable heresy as an antichrist. Whoever humbly falls on this word shall be saved, but whoever this word falls on will be destroyed. See Jeremiah chapter 23 verses 28 to 29, Matthew chapter 21 verse 44, and Revelation chapter 22 verses 18 to 19. The five indictments. There are five indictments against all of us who preach or serve the Lord, lest we dare serve him without fear and rejoice without trembling at his word. It is my considered belief and conclusion that all Christians, irrespective of their church or denominational positions, face these indictments. A. We condemn ourselves if we do not live what we preach or teach. If what we do during the day is different from what we do at night, we condemn ourselves. See Matthew chapter 12 verses 36 to 37. B. The wrath of God is on those who suppress the word of God in unrighteousness. That is, feel good, prosperity, covetousness, using the word deceitfully or unfaithfully. See Romans chapter 1 verses 18 to 25. 
C. We are counted least and unfit to enter his presence if we intentionally, knowingly, willingly, or recklessly break the word of God and teach and encourage others to do so. Matthew chapter 5 verse 19. D. It would have been better if we were never born than to cause any offense against vulnerable children of God, including taking undue advantage of them. See Matthew chapter 18 verses 6 to 14. E. We are condemned already if we outrightly reject the truth. Keep in mind that half-truth amounts to rejection of the whole truth. See John chapter 3 verse 19, John chapter 12 verses 47 to 48, and 1 John chapter 2 verse 21. The mystery of barren versus bad tree. Let me share with you the mystery of a barren and a bad tree, which is analogous to the Pharisees and the present generation of preachers. A barren tree or branch will be taken away or given some helping hand. Peradventure, it may become fertile. See Luke chapter 13 verses 6 to 9 and John chapter 15 verses 1 to 2. Unlike the barren tree, a bad tree is cut down and cast into fire. See Matthew chapter 7 verse 19. Again, unlike the barren tree, which if it is taken away, or even cut down, dies forever. A bad tree, on the other hand, continues its evil deeds after it has been cut down and burnt. A bad tree bears many bad fruits, which are dispersed all over the globe. And you know what bad fruits do. They grow into bad trees, which produce more of their own bad fruits. To get rid of a bad tree requires an almost impossible task of destroying the bad tree and all its bad fruits. A barren tree or branch is simply taken away by the Lord, meaning that there remains yet a chance or hope of being grafted in if it repents and becomes productive. This mystery comes alive as the Apostle Paul writes to the Romans concerning some Jews who were broken off due to unbelief. Thus, Therefore, consider the goodness and severity of God. On those who fail, severity, but toward you, goodness, if you continue in his goodness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. And they also, if they do not continue in unbelief, will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Romans chapter 11 verses 22 to 23. The alarming and horrendous proliferation of bad trees and their fruits and their abominable violence against the kingdom of God has almost eroded any trust and confidence in the body of Christ. The most dangerous enemy is the enemy within, whose activities make the name of the Lord evil spoken of, and unto them is fulfilled the Lord's parable of the enemy sowing tares among the wheat. See Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to 30. Let us all heed the admonishment of Apostle Paul. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 1 to 2. May God use this peace to provoke all of us to repentance unto good works and fulfillment of the purpose of our calling, which is to be good trees that bear good fruits that remain until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.